Hello and welcome back to Rappers Art Artist Showcase. I'm your host, Katori Walker, and we're here today in the beautiful studios at Yoho. What's very interesting is that these private studios house an array of artists. Today, we are here to take a sneak peek inside a very special artist that is a sculptor and a medalist. Her name is Jacqueline Lorio. We are privileged to grab her attention today so she can share with us everything that she does and we get to look at some of her work. So come on in. Hello, Jacqueline. Glad that you can come. My studio. <laughs> yes, thank you for thank you for sharing. Now, how long have you been here? I have been here, I guess it's almost two years. Oh really? Year and a half, two years. Wow. And, you know, it took quite a while to get organized. And uh, last year someone left the studio and she gave me two more shelving units. And that allowed to get me to get more organized. So, you know, since that happened, I felt good about being here and utilizing the space. So I try to get here at least twice a week, turn on some music, yeah, well, do my thing. I mean, it must feel amazing to work, like, at least knowing that you have a whole bunch of artists around you working as well. I mean, that must feel really good that you're all creating at the same time and creating, you know, different well, types been, of art. This, this past year, it's been interesting because people really have stayed in their studios, you know, just because of you know, the restrictions and the COVID and everything. But before that, you know, people were more out and about, and I think. I think probably in the fifth floor there, there's even more in and out of the, the studios. But I think, you know, once you get into your studio and you kind of get into a zen and you're working on stuff, you, people sort of close the door. They don't want to be interrupted in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's a way of, you know, you're in a community, but yet you have space that you can really get some work done. Right. And talking about work, let's talk about what you do. That's why we're here. But I can't help but notice this guy right here. So <laughs> you are a sculptor and a medalist, correct? Yes. And an yeah. occupational therapist. I am a retired pediatric occupational therapist. And I retired about four years ago. So you retired but, four years ago, but you've been doing this for how long? Uh, for a very long time you know, on a, on a part-time basis. But I, when I was living in, in the city, a friend of mine who's a well-known sculptor, I started taking classes with him, uh, Greg Wyatt. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'd already studied anatomy. So my bent was toward sculpture and three-dimension as opposed to, you know, two-dimension. Although two years ago, I took a workshop in printmaking. And so I've been doing that also because I mean, it was, this is like a two-day workshop, and at the end of two days, I had like eight pieces, you know, wow. a variety, and sculpting takes me, you know, six to 12 months or more to finish a piece, so that was like amazing, <laughs> just amazing. to have something, you know, after a couple of days. Okay, let's take a look. We're just gonna jump, or we're gonna go backwards then. Let's just jump here. So this is what you did at the class that you took. It, it was, I mean, it was part of it, you know. Like, I've been working on this. I mean, the, you know, the part of the, the printing was, was done before, but I've just, you know, cut it out and glued it down and cut out sections and have been applying sections to it. And I think it's done. These aren't glued down yet, but I So wanted... I don't want to hit the table or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is, isn't the same as doing something three-dimensional. So I like the idea of adding dimension to this, which is why I have these raised pieces mm -hmm. on it. Well, like I said, with this guy here, like, what's the story about him? I'm just, I don't know why I'm intrigued by him. Well, this is really um, a base. Mm -hmm. You add clay onto it to create a, a face. Oh, okay. So this this is acting as, you know, the skull. It's inside of your head you get, you know, the bony skull. So in essence it's the bony skull. So at least it gives you the basic shape and form. So when you're adding clay on, you can get closer to a likeness than starting from scratch. Oh that's brilliant. So Okay. You no, know, it helps. Yeah. And now over here, this is absolutely beautiful. 
Well, this is part of a, a project. The, the first one is actually the, the green one up there, the, the wheelchair piece. And that was at Helen Hayes Hospital, which is the New York State Rehab Hospital. You know, being an occupational therapist, I'm interested in rehab. And there's very little in art that deals with disability. This one is of a wheelchair racer, and the wheels are the yin-yang symbol. You know, parts make the whole. So that, that's the first one. This is the second one that's in the process. And he's going to be a veteran, because there are a lot of adaptive sports now. You know, in England, they have the Invictus Games. And in this, this country, the Wounded Warrior Program. You know, and, and the Olympics, they have the Paralympics, which mm -hmm. are right after it. Mm -hmm. which, you know, there are all kinds of wheelchair races and everything. But again, there's really nothing that I'm aware of in art that shows that. And we had, you know, so many veterans coming back that lost limbs, and I think that it should be, you know, honored. I see. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Now, this is what type of ball? Is this soccer or is this basketball or what type of well, ball? Well, it's that? in the process. I, I was thinking basketball, but it may change into a football. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. It's not, it's it's not big enough for, for anything. It's too small. <laughs> right now, it's but, in the process. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And what's this? And then he'll, oh. well, he has a prosthetic. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, wow. So this is an oil-based clay, mm -hmm. so it doesn't dry out. Um, how long does it usually take to do a piece like this? A couple of years or a couple of months? Because you've work, been working on it well, on and off, this, right? Well, this one's been on and off for a couple of years. But, okay. You know, I've been, and I need to kind of just finish it. So <laughs> after you finish sculpting everything, what's the next process? Then a mold is made of it. Okay. And these are some of the molds, not of that, but of other pieces. So a, a rubber mold is made over a piece. And then at a foundry, waxes are poured into these. And then they are dipped into a ceramic shell solution, which hardens. And then it goes into an oven and the wax melts out leaving a hollow. And the bronze is poured into that hollow. Mm -hmm. Bronzes are always hollow. They're only about a quarter of an inch thick. Doesn't matter how big they are. They can't be solid. I didn't They'll be know too that. heavy. Yeah. And also when they cool, they would contract and the metal would crack. So all bronzes are, are hollow. Interesting. That's a fact. So I press clay. This actually came out of this. So I you know I press clay into it and oh, let okay. it dry and then it, it popped out. This is uh, porcelain clay that's been fired. And then it was playing around with glazes and whatnot. And oh, I love that. So the, the piece that's on the wall are actually these figures came out of these molds, different molds. Well, it's called Memory and Repair, and it kind of reflects about what was going on this whole past year about you know, losing people and then or memorializing them, but also, you know, remembering of what people were like and also relationships that have come and gone, gotten better, need to be repaired. So, you know, these are about repairing. And this stuff kind of reminds me, I don't know if that is the idea, but it reminds me of like clouds, like hair, it reminds me of clouds. Like this is how I'm visualizing it. This was uh, New England Sculptor Association just had a show. I had it in and it won first prize. Oh, which first is very prize. Nice. Oh. Oh, very good. But, Congratulations. They, they interviewed the juror, mm -hmm. and he was saying that when he was looking at work, he wanted some, he wanted works that made you stop and think. Mm -hmm. And he had seen this, and it's like, this is really different and interesting, you know, I have to kind of ponder this. But they, the forms, you know, they, they've evolved. Mm -hmm. Initially, I was thinking them of sort of snow forms, mm -hmm. and then they became sort of more like wave forms, and, but cloud forms kind of, you know, fit into that oh, whole thing too. I see the wave too. too, too. Yeah, I do see that. I just love this. Now, what about this piece here? Can you talk to us about okay. this piece? That one also was done in clay, and it's hollow inside, and then it was fired. This piece is actually marble. This is marble? Oh, wow. So this piece was carved directly in this white Carrara marble, and I had just 
images of things. And there's a very famous uh, photographer, Weston, did these pictures of green peppers. I don't know if you've ever seen them. They look very much like human forms. So that was kind of the idea. Right now it's called Upon These Shoulders, and sometimes titles change. And it's also about harvest and abundance. And this is lettuce and an eggplant and leeks and onions. But I wanted to get it enlarged. And there's a way you can do it. I've been going to Barbara Siegel's oh, studio yes, yes. to you know, work on marble. And um, she's working with, he's in Canada, and he has this water jet machine that will carve stone. Wow. And what I did was we made a plaster, which is, this, this is the plaster. And sent this to him, and then he made a digital file of it. And then we chose a very pale green onyx stone and it was enlarged to about 23 inches wow. almost twice the size of this mm. and then it comes back and but you still have to put in all the fine details mm -hmm. so instead of two years maybe it's only six months <laughs> That's <laughs> that amazing. You, have to, you know, so it's a tool, and you know, we had a lot of discussions about that versus hand carving everything. You see some of these studios that produce these massive pieces, and they have all kinds of people working for them mm -hmm. and using all kinds of tools. That's um, amazing tools. technology. Yeah. There are these tiny little black seeds that float in the Hudson River. They're called devil's heads. Tons of them. And oh, it's an invasive plant that comes into the river. I mean, if you can think something this small in this shape, it's the most extraordinary nature's form. It's really cool. Wow. So I sent him some of these seeds mm -hmm. and he made a file of them. So this, this is the, the, the rough carving that came back from him. I haven't started cleaning it up. There are a lot more details that I need to put in. Mm -hmm. And then we did another one in another material, oh, which wow. is a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. but it's so fleshy. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> looks like flesh. <laughs> it's really I'm kind scared. Of... I don't even want to touch it. <laughs> it's <really laughs> amazing. It feels like it's, in there. it's just really incredible. I'm also doing some glass faces. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Look at this. Oh, how beautiful. Oh, I'm going to like that, too. Okay, how is so, this? This is heat that's melting the glass? It's almost like a plaster form mm -hmm. for this one. And you lay the glass on it, and it goes into a kiln, and it slumps onto oh, okay. it. But these are... Um, there's two firings. They they first they're put over metal rods, so they they slump some, mm -hmm. and then they're put into a kiln on an angle so that they slide down and fold. So it started out flat, you know, then it folded in on itself. And this, this one really too, cool. but it, you know, it did it sort of did a different thing, kind of rolled over and folded on itself, which is you know the same idea, but. You know, you never know how these things are going to. I love that. I love the come, idea that you don't out. have an idea of what it's going to come out like. My sculpture is very um, academic and takes a long time. And so to have other mediums that are more immediate. Yes, <laughs> yes. I love that you found something else that you have a passion about. And now this here, these are some, now these? These are the metals. Okay, so can you explain to us, like, how did that happen? How did you end up doing these metals? And I understand that you did quite a few different ones. Yeah. So this was years ago. I heard about the idea of doing art metals, which are very different from coinage. Coins are actually sculpted also, and they're usually sculpted in about eight inch plaster bats, and then they're reduced. But the government has very exact regulations on design and everything. So the art metals are really very open. You know, they're not meant for coinage. You know, they're, they're just really small handheld you know, pieces of artwork. 
based on a design of what the garden looks like. The Untermeyer Garden. Mm -hmm. You've been in it, I'm oh, sure, yeah. walking. You know? I go there, I paint there, I everything, walk there. So this is the entrance, and these are the two beech yeah. trees. And then this is the canals. Mm. which are they're supposed to be uh, four seasons. Mm -hmm. So this was done in clay and then I made a rubber mold over it mm -hmm. and a wax is poured into it. And it's also attached to a circular base that has lettering on it. It has the Untermeyer Conservancy lettered right. onto it. Picture outside of this three foot by two foot relief that was based on this historic painting of what downtown Yonkers by Phillips Manor Hall looked like in 1784. Yeah. So I've done a bronze relief of that, which is temporarily over at Phillips Manor Hall. They're babysitting it until mm -hmm. it gets installed in the park. So it's going to go on some kind of a pedestal on the south side where they think the, the original painting was probably done, having a bonded bronze copy of it made okay. because it was accepted into a show for the National Sculpture Society. So it's going down to Brooklyn Gardens in South Carolina. Yeah, <laughs> but okay. Bond of Bronze is, is much lighter. You know, okay. it's, it's not heavy like the bronze. You know, these, I'm hoping that you know, really I can get veterans organizations interested and supportive of it. So I, I have a third piece in mind that I want to do. Also, and you know, maybe I'll donate them to Walter Reed Hospital. You know, it's, it's up in the air, but it's really a, a project that you know I want to finish and promote and put it out there because it needs to be out there you know, for people to understand that you know, regardless of your disability, you're still able and you're out in the public. And, I, I think that's a, I think that's a beautiful thing. You know, tell people your website. My whole name, it's JacquelineLorio.com is my website. And my email is JacquelineLorio at Yahoo.com. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know. Now for the small pieces, like let's say I wanted to buy that from you. Are those for sale? Or yeah, well, you know, these really, you know, any pieces are for sale. And if you have molds of pieces, then you can make editions of them. So most things are and if and if I can make copies I do try to make a, a very limited edition mm -hmm. of maybe five. So what's um, so far? What is your heaviest piece? Is it the one you were talking about at Phyllis Manor or what's your heaviest <laughs> no, piece that you've ever created? I, <laughs> I also carve in wood. So I have it's a four foot black walnut wood male torso with his hands bound behind him. <laughs> That's heavy. That was sold, and I did a female counterpart that was about the same size, and that was sold to the same patrons. So they have both matching pieces, which is That's very beautiful. nice. But I have the mold of the male piece, so I could have it cast in bronze mm -hmm. uh, if I had a reason to do it. This field, is it dominated mostly by men or is there equal like men and women? That's a problem. There's certainly a lot more women in it now. It used to be very much dominated by men and certainly the monumental work, a lot of it, but there have been pieces unveiled in Central Park. There was the suffragette, uh, the three women suffragettes piece. Yes. And um, that was a woman sculptor from Brooklyn. It was a pleasure being here today at Jacqueline Loyo's studio here at Yoho. These pieces are amazing right here. Get to see how the artists work. And I want everyone to know that Jacqueline is a phenomenal artist. Check out her website and see if there's anything there that you're interested in. She does work on a commission basis. Please join us next week on Yonkers Arts. Mm -hmm.